I loved Hillary and Bill. You know that. They mm -hmm. were friends. Yep. They said they should have listened to me later. You got to go win those union. We all have to go win those union halls. Welcome back to America Decides. That was some of my conversation on the takeout with Michigan Democratic Congresswoman Debbie Dingell way back on September 29th. Feels like a couple of lifetimes ago. Dingell saw trouble earlier than most for Hillary Clinton in Michigan. That was back in 2016. Congresswoman Debbie Dingell joins us now for a take on where things currently stand. She joins us via Zoom from Ann Arbor, which, if you are curious, is in Washtenaw County, Michigan. Debbie, it's great to see you. I know it's close in Michigan. Do you, tech, do you detect momentum in one direction or another presently? Adrian, it's good to be with you. And to be perfectly candid, it's tight. It's just absolutely tight. And who turns out, who votes, is really going to make the difference. And I could not make a prediction right now. Whose ground game looks better to, your, to you? Well, the vice president's ground game is uh, very strong. The, the voter contact is there. Uh, she's been here. You feel the energy in that. But Donald Trump has been here multiple times. J.D. Vance is here. I don't think, quite frankly, they have the ground game that Democrats do. But there's been a little reversal uh, this year in the election in that Democrats have more money than Republicans do. And normally, Republicans have more money than Democrats do. But a Trump voter is a strong, motivated voter, a mega voter is, and the energy is there. And a lot of people, people forget that the vice president's really only been the candidate for two months. They're getting to know her. Everybody's sick of the advertising. They're sick of this campaign. And it's really coming down to who votes. And we've got to turn out our votes. And, Debbie, when you think about this race as compared to the alarm bells you were ringing in 2016, what's different? So, you know, I'm going to, I've been thinking about this a lot because at this point I had said to you, she's going to win and nobody believes me. 2020, I knew that Biden was going to win and I felt comfortable. I think what's different now is that I'm still watching a lot of people try to get to know who she really is. Uh, we've got to get in those union halls. I will tell you, on Saturday, I did a labor rally with six national presidents. In 2016, national presidents knew they had a problem in their union halls, but they didn't want to admit it. Now, the union leaders are in talking to their membership, doing that comparison. They don't, you know, a lot of union members believe everything that Donald Trump tells them and has no idea of what the real record is, how many jobs were lost in just Michigan, 89,000 during the Trump administration, the plants that were closed, uh, the fact that he says he's not going to pay overtime, but the reason he's not going to pay overtime is he doesn't think we should pay overtime. So there's a lot of education that's really being done right down to the last minute. Debbie, you mentioned that there's still some gap between knowing who the vice president is. Is there time to close that gap of understanding or appreciating or getting a sense of who the vice president is? Yes, I think you're seeing her do it. You've seen her. Uh, she's been in Michigan a lot and she's back. She's in Michigan right now. She's coming back later in the week with Michelle Obama. President Obama is here tomorrow. I think you're seeing a lot of what needs to be done, done. I think, you know, quite frankly, I think people maybe took the eye off of Michigan and Wisconsin and just thought it was about Pennsylvania, and we got to do all three. But you know what? People know they've got to do all three. We're rolling up our sleeves. People are out there doing the work. There is an issue that you know well, Congresswoman, uh, in the area near Detroit, Dearborn. There was an uncommitted effort during the primaries. There is still concern about Gaza. What is your level of concern about Democrats who otherwise would participate sitting this election out as a protest to Biden-Harris policies in the Middle East? I, look, I'm going to be blunt. That's just a real issue. You cannot escape it. Uh, there's a lot. Uh, there are so many raw, passionate feelings right now on all sides of this issue, which is one of the reasons that I say the work has got to be done, because quite, you just need to accept the fact that some of the votes that might have been there are not going to be there. I, you keep trying to talk to people, have them understand that this is that Donald Trump one of the first things he did is to try to do a Muslim ban. He talks about incarceration camps. 
He talks about all of that. But we've got to make up those votes in other places, which is why it is so important that we turn out the votes. And we just have to do it. Is Jill Stein a factor in Michigan? Yes. Uh, I, uh, she was, you know, she did a rally in Dearborn last week. She was on the University of Michigan's campus. Uh, it's she, a vote for Jill Stein, in my mind, is going to be a vote to help Donald Trump. But third-party candidates have notoriously caused problems in Michigan. So we've got to, um, it, it's not, I understand why people are voting for Jill Stein, but she's not going to, the reality is, and I say this with all due respect, she's not going to win the presidential election. And people really need to think about what the next four years will be about and what the contrast in is in these two candidates. Always a candid, candid conversation. Congresswoman Debbie Dingell, thanks so very much. Thank you.